Hey folks, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host Mark Guido and we are out here in the Lakeside Mountains in the West Desert of Utah. We're going to show you around some old mining ruins, uh, the Lakeside Trestle which carried the railroad across the Great Salt Lake and uh, we'll also head up Black Mountain behind our camp here. So stay tuned. So Zoe and I are out here with my buddy Angus, right. uh, who's down here from the Air Force Base up in Ogden. Uh, we've actually found a beautiful spot. Here it is the Memorial Day weekend, and we have all kinds of elbow room. We have no neighbors whatsoever. Uh, we're high on a mountain saddle overlooking the Great Salt Lake in one direction, and uh, the Great Salt Desert, Great Salt Lake Desert off to our west. It's a beautiful spot. We're not too far north of I-80, about four or five miles north of I-80 at the foot of Black Mountain. Uh, let's show you around camp a little bit before we go in and explore. The Lakeside Mountains are a 34 mile long mountain range located on the southwest perimeter of Utah's Great Salt Lake. At 6,621 feet, Craner Peak is their highest point, some 2,400 feet of elevation above the largest saltwater lake in the western hemisphere, the Great Salt Lake. Although it's bounded to the east by Salt Lake City and its suburbs, land around the lake's northern and western shores is nearly uninhabited. In an average year, the lake covers an area of around 1,700 square miles. But with an average depth of only 14 feet, the lake's size fluctuates substantially. For instance, in 1963, it reached its lowest recorded size at 950 square miles. But in 1988, the surface area was more than triple that, at the historic high of 3,300 square miles. In terms of surface area, the Great Salt Lake is the largest lake in the United States that's not part of the Great Lakes region. A terminal lake, it's the largest remnant of the ancient Lake Bonneville, a prehistoric lake that was 10 times larger and thus once covered much of western Utah. Just above our camp, a narrow mag road ascends 6,493 foot Black Mountain to access numerous antennas and radio repeaters. We're going to use the road to get a better view of the Great Salt Lake and the surrounding desert from the summit where hang gliders occasionally huck themselves off the mountain too.
A portion of the Lakeside Mountains traverses the northern unit of the U.S. Air Force Utah Training and Test Range. Most of our maps show the entire area as off-limits to non-military personnel. But we found a route north through the Puddle Valley, where they allow you to travel the roadway, but not deviate from it. The northern section of the Lakeside Mountains terminates where the community of Lakeside once stood, alongside the Southern Pacific's Transcontinental Railroad at the west end of the Lucen Cutoff. The Lucen Cutoff avoided the much hillier original line through the Promontory Mountains in favor of a flat wooden railroad trestle across the Great Salt Lake, built in 1904. In the 1950s, the trestle was replaced by a parallel 20 mile long concrete and stone causeway. using Well Pass to cross the Lakeside Mountains from west to east. It's an understatement to say that the Well Pass Road is a bit underutilized. At times it's hard to even determine where the road travels. Exploding Air Force ordnance isn't the only danger in the Great Salt Lake Desert. The U.S. magnesium plant on the southwest shore of the lake, which produces 14% of the worldwide supply of magnesium, is also a Superfund cleanup site. Facility operations and waste disposal practices contaminated soil, air, surface water, and groundwater with hazardous chemicals, and it has been known to release chlorine and hydrogen chloride gases. We're at the remains of the Monarch Mine on the east side of the Lakeside Mountains, where workers once extracted trace amounts of gold, copper, lead, silver, and zinc in the early 20th century. There remain foundations, assorted metal waste, and the remnants of even a stamp mill adjacent to what was the McBride Tunnel, yet there's no evidence on site of a town or even cabins. As there were at least a half a dozen other mines with this Monarch name in Utah, Information about this remote site is a bit hard to come by. The area around the crossroads named Dell, where I-80 skirts the southern end of the Lakeside Mountains en route to the Bonneville Salt Flats, is a popular area for ATV and dirt bike riding. If you leave your RV at home, this is your only other lodging option. It seems they have some vacancy. Well, now that was supposed to be the end of this episode. As a matter of fact, Angus and I, before we went to sleep on Sunday night, even recorded an outro for this video. 
However, the desert had a true grand adventure waiting for us on Monday morning. Overnight Sunday night, it started raining at about 1.30 in the morning and it absolutely poured until about 8.30 in the morning after we had gotten up. And the soil out here in the Great Salt Lake Desert is a real alkaline mix with a lot of clay in it and the ground had become completely saturated from all that rain. Sure enough, the stuff was like peanut butter, kind of like peanut butter mixed with soap. Uh, incredibly slippery, impossible to gain traction in, and unbelievably soft. I went to go get my truck in front of my trailer so I could get pinned up and head on out. And sure enough, the truck bogged down all the way up to its frame rails, got it stuck. Uh, Angus, because he was pointing out of the campsite and had gravity on his side, he was able to get his trailer out. We spent about an hour and a half, maybe almost even two hours with a recovery strap, trying to yank my truck out of that. But the problem is there was a slight slope and every time we moved the truck, it would slide sideways on that grease right towards the trailer door. Um, there was almost no way I was gonna get it out of there without hitting the trailer. So I hopped in Angus's truck and we headed back to I-80 where I could get some cell service and call a buddy of mine to come on out with his winch to pull me out so I wouldn't hit the trailer. Anyway, got about a mile from I-80 and in that peanut butter, Angus ended up sliding off into the ditch with his trailer. So now we're both stuck. Hiked out to I-80, I called my buddy Mark. He came out with his Rubicon, which has a bumper mounted winch on the front. And uh, Angus called a buddy of his, Kyle Menlove, who came out from Ogden with a one ton Ford. Left them to their devices while Mark and I went up, got the, the Tundra winched out of the mud. There was no way on God's green earth I was gonna get that trailer out of there under those circumstances. Ended up leaving the trailer there. Uh, by the time I got down, uh, Angus and Kyle had found this guy, Rand Ridges, who had happened by in this heavily modified desert Jeep with 45 inch tires and a 427 Corvette engine in it. And together the two of them had to pull Angus out. Now Rand's granddaughter, Camille Davis, actually managed to get cell phone video of uh, that pull and uh, gave us permission to use it in this video. So we'll share that with you here. Had to leave the trailer sitting here for a couple of days until I thought things had dried out enough. There's some more rain in the forecast, so now it's Wednesday afternoon. Figured today was a good day to try to pull it out. Called my buddy Brigham, who lives in the nearest town from here, Tooele. It's about 40 miles away, and he followed me out just in case. Give me a little bit of peace of mind. Uh, it's actually a good thing he came along, because sure enough, after I got hitched up and started to try to get the trailer turned around, got stuck in that muck again and Brigham got out his recovery strap and managed to pull both me and the trailer out of that mud puddle. And we are back on the road and I am within sight of asphalt. I'm one happy guy. So that was truly a grand adventure. If you're not yet a grand adventurer, hit that subscribe button so you can come along on all of our grand adventures. Hopefully none quite like this again. Uh, there's a little red subscribe button down there in the corner waiting for you. It's extremely important to us. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up down below. If uh, you have friends and family who are in outdoor adventure videos or on your social media, please, we encourage you to share a grand adventure. And we always love to hear from you in the comments section down below this video. Until next week, please remember life is nothing but a grand adventure. Indeed, we'll see you soon.